All right, folks, welcome back to Mike and Maurice's Mind Escape. We have episode number 226 today. Uh, we are going dis- to discuss psychedelic cannabis with uh, our guest, uh, Daniel McQueen. So we're looking forward to this. Uh, you can check out his book, Psychedelic Cannabis. I have the link down below. Shout out to Inner Traditions. Um, and uh, before we get started here, let's head on over, if you're interested, to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Podcast. For just $2 a month, you'll get exclusive guest episodes and segments. Tons of stuff up there. If we've had a a guest on our show, there's a good chance that there's a Patreon segment up there with them. Uh, And uh, so go check that out. We're also on Discord if you want to find us on there to chat. And uh, we are going to do a segment uh, with Daniel. And I'll probably upload it later uh, tonight if you're interested. So look for that. Uh, also, if you're interested, head on over to indrasweb.org. This is a social media platform we created to connect open minds. So if you're ready to speculate, hypothesize, theorize, head on over there, set up an account. Uh, we're still working on getting in the app store, so look for that. Um, we did have a winner for our t-shirt giveaway last month, and that was Cole. So congratulations, Cole. We're going to do it again at the end of this month. So if anybody's interested, the only thing is we only have two sizes left available was is that large and uh medium maurice correct okay so we only have large and medium so if you're interested and you want to enter to win the shirt all you have to do is head on over to uh apple podcast leave us a five-star review take a screenshot of it and then send it to mind escape podcast at gmail.com that will enter you to win uh and um yeah uh before we get started here uh, I just want to give a shout out to my grandma. She passed away this morning and uh, I was close with her. I uh, love her very much. She bought me my first guitar, always uh, kind of got me into the arts and, and pushed me to do the things that I wanted to do and was always there for me. So um, it's a sad day. I love her very much. I'm going to miss her. And uh, yeah, and also. Towards the end, I would drive her to the, the hospital and we would have talks about life and uh, consciousness surviving death and reincarnation and things like that, which you normally wouldn't have with your grandparents. So I think that's important to talk about with people you love, you know, just because it's interesting. And I like to see uh, where people stand on that kind of stuff. So never don't feel too uh, shy to have those conversations. So I love everybody. And uh, yeah, I appreciate all the kind messages and stuff like that. So um, but uh on a positive note, we have uh, we have Daniel here, and uh, welcome to the show, Daniel. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. It's good to be here. Thanks for joining uh, us. Yeah, Daniel is thanks, a Maurice. psychedelic specialist. He's also a psychedelic therapy educator, author of Psychedelic Cannabis, which we were going to talk about today. He's also the co-founder of the Center for Medicinal Mindfulness uh and the dmtx program uh we might discuss the dmtx program for the patreon segment so uh and also you are the creator of the trip sitter program is that correct that's right it's called psychedelic sitter school we teach people how to facilitate um psychedelic experiences in that program awesome so uh yeah i really enjoyed your book psychedelic cannabis um it's legal here now. It's legal where Maurice is. It's legal where you are. This is amazing. Um, I never would have thought that uh, when we started this journey 20, 25 years ago, back when we were in high school. Uh, it's yeah, just no amazing kidding, to no. see the, the progress. But uh, I really enjoyed your book from this, the sense of you approach it as if psychedelic is a, or uh, cannabis is a psychedelic, which I would agree that it is, especially high dose edibles and if you know Mm -hmm. certain strains and things like that so um why don't you give us a little bit of a background into how you got into this and then also the Mm -hmm. actual um how you got into the cannabis side of this yeah sure well again thanks for having me mike and maurice it's always fun to share uh um more information about cannabis as a psychedelic it's not as widely known as um uh as other psychedelics obviously are and we're working to advocate for it as a as a good tool for therapeutic purposes but also for personal exploration purposes too you know it's it's very reliable as a psychedelic um so i got started um working with psychedelics in my early 20s 
I was part of some spiritual communities that used them um, intentionally. And, uh, and then about 10 years after that, I realized that uh, the spiritual aspects of the work were um, not the full story. And I wanted to learn the psychological. And I got my master's at, trans, uh, in, uh, at Naropa University in transpersonal counseling, which is um, the, the field of study that uh, was developed. Uh, when psychedelics were discovered, uh, transpersonal, the word transpersonal was coined by Dr. Stan Groff, who's a psychedelic expert. Um, and I had every intention of being an ethical underground guide at that point. You know, the, uh, it was either research, which was just starting at that time. This was about 12 years ago now, um, uh, or underground practitioners. And I never really felt comfortable with that path to begin with, but I was, you know, passionate enough to explore that edge. Um, uh, but then, uh, we got, I got married to, uh, Allison, my wife, who also helped co-found medicinal mindfulness and started having kids and things. And I think my risk profile kind of changed a little bit at that point. Um, so I have two little ones, you know, that we uh, are doing this work to provide for. Um, let's see, I graduated in 2012 and then 2014 cannabis became legal in Colorado. Colorado was one of the first states to legalize what we now call adult use. Uh, oh, you know, not just, um, you know, medical marijuana. And a friend of mine knew my interest in working with psychedelics and he said, hey, with cannabis becoming legal, have you ever considered working with cannabis as a psychedelic, you know, for therapeutic work and for, you know, for journey work? And, you know, I'd always used cannabis. I'd always used it in conjunction with other medicines in my own, you know, my own life and personal life and such. And But for some reason, I'd never considered it as a possibility, you know, but it, it kind of um, elicited a process in me and I started to experiment with it. And he helped organize, uh, my friend John helped organize some of the first groups we did with cannabis, uh, uh, putting it into like what you would call a set and setting of a psychedelic experience. And um, intuitively, I was drawn to blend the medicine. And we'll, we should probably talk about that, you know, at some point in the podcast, because it's sure. a pretty important aspect. But uh, I decided, you know, it was blending the medicine and it created this unusual entourage effect that amplified the psychedelic nature of cannabis and minimize what were the common side effects, the negative side effects that people talk about. And, um, and uh, we started doing groups with it. Uh, as soon as it became legal, we started doing uh, group psychedelic cannabis experiences at a local yoga studio that allowed us to work from. And people were blown away by it. Um, I was I was surprised as, as surprised as everybody else that it was as effective. I was just starting my training program at that time, and I thought maybe it would be a useful there, you know, like a training tool to kind of give people an you know an altered states experience. But one one of my friends jokingly accused me of putting DMT in the blend um, <laughs> because her, her experience was so strong, and she said, "Daniel, if I didn't know you and trust you, I swear I would you." Would, put DNT in that, you know, and at that point, I realized that maybe I should keep exploring this and looking into it and, um, and developing it. And, you know, it did circles for years before um, we started working with individuals. And, and that became that became as effective as well. We can share that as, as well. Yeah, the, uh, the people thinking they're, they've gotten spiked or something like that is kind of a common thing. I remember I was at a Humphreys McGee New Year's show in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. and one of our friend's wife ate uh, like a brownie, and it was just cannabis in there, but she had like a super intense, you know, spiritual experience, but it was a little rough early on, and I just remember yeah. thinking like, you know, this is a very potent thing that, you know, even though... It's maybe not on the spectrum of, you know, what like a psilocybin or LSD or DMT is. It still can get you to those places if you know what you're doing and you mm -hmm. incorporate it into like meditation or something like that. Or you take even a really high dose. So mm -hmm. uh, I mm -hmm. always thought that that was interesting and not, you know, obviously you see some of the reports of people like novices not knowing what they're doing or the dosage or anything and running into trouble that way as well. Yeah, it surprises them, you know, they, they just weren't, they were expecting to get high, feel right. euphoric, and then all of a sudden they're, you know, 
processing their early childhood or past lives right. or flying through the cosmos. You know, it's definitely not quite what people are expecting. Um, yeah. It's just, uh, it's, it's amazing. But the one thing I really liked about your book is you go through, you know, the mindfulness, you know, the meditation aspect of it. And to be honest with you, I never really had, I've always, like I said, I've used it since I was younger, since I was in high school, but I never really had a reverence for it until about four years ago, five years ago. And I started to meditate with it. And I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. this is that mixed with meditation, super potent. And it, it can take you to those places. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, sure. You know, so I think we want to differentiate between recreational use, which is playful or celebratory or just an opportunity to chill out and relax and let go of the day. You know, um, those are how people normally are to help sleep and whatnot. Um, but there's this whole other side of cannabis where if you use it in a meditation, meditation allows us to turn towards things, right? Um, mm. We're turning towards our felt sense in our body. We're turning towards our emotional awareness and also the thoughts in our mind, right? And so cannabis in that container amplifies all of those things. It amplifies our, our felt sense in our bodies. It amplifies access to our emotions and, and, op and actually even um, uh, starts, you know, emotional processes that we've had buried. And then it allows us, like the chatter in our mind will amplify, will get louder as well. And it allows us to turn towards these experiences with greater clarity. And so, it, you know, so we either so there's there's so that's one way to use cannabis as something as cannabis and like um, so like therapy enhancing um, mindfulness enhancing um, somatic awareness enhancing. That's why people use it in, uh, with yoga and such. Mm -hmm. They just have greater felt sense in their body. Um, so we call that psycholytic, which means like like in the, in the therapeutic container, psycholytic means like a lower dose, but strong enough to amplify processes and reduce like our defenses. And then we have these states that are psychedelic, um, which are full-blown psychedelic experiences and not uncommon uh, to be as intense as an MDMA journey or a psilocybin journey. We've even had multiple times working with people who've had DMT level experiences or 5-MeO DMT level experiences. And that requires... Um, like a specialized set and setting, which isn't that complicated. It's basically lying down, eye covering on, listening to music and allowing the process to unfold. Um, so is it know, more about of... that then, or is it the dosage or is it a combination of the both of the two? Well, dosage is definitely a factor in it. I, and the, and the other factor would be the blend, which, uh, which is basically a blend of different cannabinoids, THC and, different terpenes and we can talk more about that and then sure. and then specific like cannabis we call it a like consensual psychedelic and that it gives us choice in how we engage it you know so if you take a psilocybin journey you're on the trip you know if you smoke dmt you're on the trip until you come down right mm -hmm. um, um it's just the nature of those medicines with with cannabis generally unless you're taking a really extreme dose of an edible or something uh, we retain our sense of agency uh, our ability to navigate the space to choose to go into it to choose to deepen it and and in that we can choose to pause it and take a break and the way we do that is we invite our clients or if we're in our own journey we lie down relax our bodies um, and, and use some gentle breathing techniques. It's not that complicated. Um, but when you hold gently still, there's something that gets activated in the cannabis experience and allows you to go deeper. And so it kind of um, gently nudges you into a psychedelic trip as opposed to like you're going whether you want to or not. Right. And so, and so if you put those right conditions, you know, good music, eye covering, laying flat on your back, like in uh, Savasana, um, uh, yogic pose, um, it will it will amplify up to psychedelic space within five or 10 minutes. Um, um, how, but, how are you um, administering this? Is it, a, is it a orally or is it uh, inhaled? <laughs> Yeah, I that's a great question. Orally. Yes, yeah. So some of our folks, uh, oral, you know, eat oral uh, 
cannabis, um, or we use nano encapsulated tinctures. Um, mm. The preferred method is a is this is called a Pax vaporizer. Yeah, it's a, yep. it's a oh, flower. Yeah. It's a it's a flower vaporizer that we use. That allows for the terpene profile to really um, create that entourage effect that we need. And and sometimes the terpenes are stripped out of like edible versions and such. So um, so edibles will cause sometimes more of the negative side effects associated with taking too much cannabis, like anxiety, paranoia, uh, sometimes panic, and, you know, sometimes vomit, throwing up, nausea and such. Um, so we're, we're able to minimize all of those when, when you're um, vaping the right blend. There's something about the terpenes that really makes a difference. I wanted to Probably ask also you about the most healthy way to ingest it as well. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that, the, right. the anxiety, because I think that mm -hmm. I mentioned this off air. There's something up to me about getting, you know, whether you're vaporizing or smoking or whatever. We used to call it back in the day, scary high, which is you get so yeah. high <laughs> that you start to have like Put those headphones like, on and go it's in almost the corner. Like, yeah, it's almost <laughs> like com coming up on psilocybin, you know, that feeling where totally. you're, you know, a little uneasy in the mm -hmm. stomach and you start to like think about all the. The, the skeletons in the closet and all that yeah, stuff because you're tripping yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so do you think that that's for somebody that's experienced are you still trying to get rid of that or minimize it or do you think that if you are experienced that you can kind of use that in a positive yeah. way? yeah yeah 100 percent. you know so this is where the setting comes in right so again cannabis is often a recreational medicine used to hanging out with friends and social settings so sometimes when people enter that state against you know quotes unquote scary high right some of it's like social anxiety like all of a sudden they start to shut down a little bit get a little self-conscious uh it's harder to communicate right and so there and so the social anxiety kind of amplifies that anxiety as well um and sometimes i would just say like it's just a physiological effect of pure thc and this is where the terpenes and the other cannabinoids come in because they can minimize that effect um so with that being said, uh, it can't, uh, anxiety obviously comes up in therapeutic settings as well. And it's usually because people are starting to step into a trip experience, a psychedelic journey experience. And like you said, those skeletons in your closet or whatnot, or, you know, that the door gets open so you can turn towards and address them and um, explore them and see what's under them and clear them out. You know, we can clear those skeletons out of the closet. So if you're in the wrong setting and that starts to happen, it can get really scary, you know, mm. get really uneasy. People will resist the experience and they are there. They're not in a safe container to do it right They're at a concert or hanging out with uh, friends or acquaintances at a party and whatnot. Right. But in this container, you know, like there's no obligation to talk. The person's lying on their back with that blindfold on in a comfortable bed in a therapeutic office. Right. And with, gentle music playing and the guides there to support them in turning towards those experiences and it'll 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 release like a wave like a, a like a chunk of anxiety will come out of somebody and it'll have content to it it'll have stories associated with it memories past experiences and uh, or realizations that are hard to accept and such and we coach our clients to breathe through those experiences and let it move through them. And so it'll amplify, but it won't amplify forever. It won't just keep going up where the person pops or whatever. Right. Uh, it'll amplify and it'll crest like a wave. So if you allow it to happen, it'll, it'll come in a chunk and then release. And then what, and then it'll come into another chunk and release. And so once you teach somebody how to navigate that, a little wave that people go through they're able to kind of get their sea legs so to speak they're able to navigate those waves themselves and then it'll just kind of flow through and clear um, mm. so usually it's just a bunch of unprocessed previous experience that um, is lying under there that's causing the anxiety right so yeah i mean i, I would agree with you and actually I, we, we were discussing this i think on our last episode with sam wolf like i don't know that i would be um, I'm not down to do the whole like group ayahuasca retreat or be around a bunch of people. I like sitting in darkness. I'm willing to do like a therapy, maybe like a one-on-one -on -one type thing, but just, 
I'm, if I'm trying to work on myself, I just don't know how other people, a bunch of other people being there is going to be helpful in that experience to me. But I mean, is it like, how do you think about sure. that? Is, is there a benefit to having like a group, a group experience? Yeah. Um, you know, it's a both and both, pl- both places are really great. Um, but cannabis is like, again, it's like not as unruly as ayahuasca, not as extreme on the gut as ayahuasca, you know, right. it's a much gentler experience in that way people generally don't go out of control or start screaming or anything you know and sometimes happens in ayahuasca experiences so group settings are a little more contained than what you would typically think in some in some ways and then groups people one um you know there's just an accessibility issue with groups in this space and we offer therapeutic groups um, for this reason and that it's just more financially affordable and uh, than one-on-one um, sessions are and so for some people it's the only option and, and so we really create a nice safe contained space they're not huge groups six to eight people especially you know something that's therapeutic um, uh, and people talk about having a like they feel supported by the group like energetically supported or they're all in it together you know they're going on the same journey but having you know different storylines in the experience so there is a felt sense of uh, support that can be helpful and mm-hmm. um the the benefit of an individual session over a group session is that you can chat you can you know talk to the guide and connect and the guide can uh, facilitate the experience like right with the person as they're going through it um, right and in group settings it's mostly more like an ayahuasca setting in that way where you're on your own doing your own work and if you need support it's going to be more um you know more reassuring words than than like deep processing and so for some people you know somebody who's had like really severe trauma and needs to work you know has a lot of content to work through individual sessions are really great for those folks because i can help guide them and it's like help guide them through those waves and support when the wave gets kind of stuck you know? right and um and 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 help elicit that breakthrough release and clear it um so i'm a fan of both we we started with groups and with cannabis and it's again it's super safe and we the largest group i've worked with with cannabis is 60 people you know so wow. it's uh it's um it's very reliably safe and uh contained um I, so I really love working with groups, um, but there is something very special about individual sessions as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I look, it's I think it's preference too. Um, sure. I just because I go back to you know maybe this is one because I didn't have reverence for like when we were younger and we would all you know eat psilocybin with our friends or something like that or go mm-hmm. to a fish show or whatever and you're just around a bunch of your friends you start to see them in a different light. And you're like, I can't believe I'm friends with this person <laughs> kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's not no knock on them. Sometimes it's maybe just your perception in that moment. But I have had those feelings being in groups where it's like, I wish I was alone to like work out mm-hmm. my own stuff and not worry about this person, you know, yeah. saying or thinking crazy stuff over here. Kind of thing. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. So when with our groups, you know, like you're not in charge of other people, uh, you know, it's the guides and, you know, we have a team holding these groups together you sure. know? and, um, and, you know, and we do a ton of screening, you know, and, uh, and safety support preparation and stuff everybody's there for that reason to turn towards their own stuff and so it's a it's a radically different experience than than being at a concert and having to like take care of your friends who you know took too much of whatever it was they did that's happened you know maurice and i at the same fish show actually we we dabbled a little bit too much in the mdma arts and uh yeah, we we both had to bow out early. Or actually, I did. I don't. I think he stayed. But uh, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. possum really mm-hmm. got to me. I had to walk out. So um, mm-hmm. I'm an yeah. introvert too. You know, like it's. <laughs> I like I like being alone in my room as well. Yeah, darkness for me. Psilocybin and darkness. I feel like I'm I'm at home mm-hmm. or something. I don't know. I can think, but I I come up with thoughts I've never thought before. Sometimes I write them down and I'll look at them later. I'm like, I don't even know what the heck I was. That doesn't even make sense in the normal world, you know, but yeah. sometimes uh, there's good nuggets in there. It's like, you gotta, you gotta mine for them. In the, exactly. In the journal entries. Exactly. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed your book for the sense that like you're presenting it as you can achieve those states with cannabis and you definitely can. I mean, like I just said, I've had a lot of experience with psilocybin and uh, probably more than most. And 
Mm-hmm. You can achieve that after glow where it's like, I got to get my life in order. I got to fix this. I got to fix that. You can achieve that with cannabis, no doubt. And that, that coming up feeling as well. Um, and I, one thing I really liked about your book is you mm-hmm. kind of walk through, um, not just like all the like different, like things that can go wrong, but also how to minim like you said, minimize the negative aspects through mindfulness mm-hmm. and different types of meditation and thought processes and stuff like that. So, why don't you go into a little bit of like a, how to how to achieve a, a a positive experience or how to go into an experience using positivity? Mm-hmm. So that's when we're getting into the mindset, right? Uh, you know, so cultivating the mindset. Um, so mindset is what you're bringing into the experience, but it's also you can program your mindset um, it through what we you know through like ritualized meditation or ceremony you know it's it's a way to orient the subconscious mind to be more open and receptive um so we we bring in ceremony into it gratitude statements you know you can call them prayers or meditations i don't really get too attached to you know that language i'll i'll uh, orient to my clients needs and worldview so to speak you know but in any tradition uh, throughout the history of the world, particularly the mystical traditions, there's some sort of creating a sacred space, right? Creating an intentional container that's different from day-to-day life. And uh, the way I know how to do that is by, uh, you know, uh, meditating and calling in the spirits of the cardinal directions and the earth and the sky. Um, And I do that by inviting in certain mind states um you know i don't call in animal spirits and things like that um you know more very skill set oriented you know so calling in the capacity to stay focused calling in the capacity to play and to remain curious even when it's difficult calling in the capacity to relax and allow the experience to unfold and then the last one would be like the ability to discern and understand what's going on right Mm -hmm. like we want this to be impactful in our lives right and so so we can like evoke like at least the seeds of particular mind states that are really helpful in these spaces um the other key which i would this is for any psychedelic medicine, you know, so a lot, all of these practices are useful for other psychedelics as well, is uh, using the breath, um, you know, so um, b- the belly, b- breathing into our belly, as opposed to our chest is like a transformational breath that helps move an experience through us. And, and like, think about like, when you're, when you have extreme anxiety or something, people are either breathing really shallow and fast, like they're hyperventilating, mm-hmm. or they've stopped breathing completely, right? Like they're holding their breath. And, um, and so returning gently to gentle breathing into the belly, um, and focusing your awareness on that as these things are moving through and like turning on, you know, like that, right. uh, that un uncomfortable space sometimes that when when it really starts to take effect um is a is a really good practice like everything um in the end is centered on the breath um i know it sounds super simple but it's true and um and when when i'm doing you know so i have a body scan um meditation that's on our website that people have downloaded and used for when the medicine comes on and and so you can imagine like after the medicine's taken and it's uh, gratitude and take it in gratitude with intention um invite people to lie down and breathe in their bellies and then i do a simple body scan meditation and uh, that's like relax your toes all the way up to the top of your head um, practice it's about 10 minutes or so and Mm. and so that lets the body or the client's mind stay focused on something you know it's like a gentle distraction in a way and it's also a way to really relax the body and helps with that transition so um, so anybody, any of your listeners, um, you know, the invitation is to like do a meditation as the as the journey's coming on, and don't turn away from uh, to allow yourself to turn towards and accept what's arising, and it will usually move through. The more you resist it, the longer it takes to move through. You know, you can get kind of stuck in those spaces. It's just a big wave. You know, it's like you learn to surf them as opposed to um, be pulled in under them. You know? Right. Have you ever looked at awesome. like the historical use? Like we've we were doing we're in the kind of in the middle of a series like what was soma, and we had Chris Bennett on who makes a very he's a cannabis historian, and he makes a oh, very yeah. compelling case 
that soma mm-hmm. was cannabis and through the linguistics and all the stuff and mm-hmm. uh the ritual and everything and the effects and one of the arguments against that that you know that some people say it's oh like a ayahuasca analog or mushrooms or something like that would be that cannabis isn't psychedelic enough to produce mm-hmm. the effects found in the rig veda and the avesta mm-hmm. and all that um have you looked at the history and the rituals or is this all just drawn from your personal experience Yeah, you know, my practices were drawn from my experiences with other medicine practices. So, you know, I'm not an expert on the history of the of the spiritual use of the medicine, although, you know, I've read it and, you know, studied um, some of those traditions and such. Um, So this is more of a modern redeveloped practice in a way um, that, that brings in other psychedelic practices, mindfulness practices and somatic um therapeutic practices um but you know there are there are traditions in south and central america that bring in cannabis um some communities bring in cannabis into the ayahuasca circles and such and they either speak to it as um um mostly santa maria you know so mm. so there's those practices and i've also read about ancient practices as well um that there's been i forget which country they found these big vats in that they um these stone vats and they scraped and analyzed the, um, the vats and that, that was cannabis, opium and ephedra, yeah. you know, and I could see that being a really potent combination. The ephedra keep you awake, the opium deeply relaxing and definitely, you know, uh, altering itself. And then the psychedelic nature of cannabis, a high dose cannabis experience, I yeah, can that, see that being equivalent to. You know, I think these. that's what's related to the soma stuff, uh-huh. but like that. So there's debate on whether it was just cannabis initially, and then maybe ventured out into other psycho- psychoactive compounds, and it was a combination of the ritual, like soma was the ritual plus psychoactive compound. But again, sure. uh, Chris Bennett makes <clears throat> a compelling case for cannabis as at least the original, and now we find, you know, I don't know if you saw that archaeological find from. Um, uh, I think it was Israel where they found an, uh, you know, uh, an old, uh, temple. They found resin and yeah, they've been finding all the these different sites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They've been finding all mm-hmm. these sites with all these uh, different, uh, yeah. um, yeah, they were hotboxing it, right. They were, yeah. um, you know, they would, they would get in these little huts and, and put the, uh, cannabis resin on, on the, uh, coals and hotbox and, and they mm-hmm. would induce psychedelics, you know, mystical states with, uh, with that as well. Uh, there is there's also evidence of like uh, there are these little wooden bowls that they would put hot rocks in and put the cannabis on top of it. Mm. And it was used in funerary rituals and such. And, right. Um, but, you know, so I'll, I'll just speak from my personal experience. I've worked with thousands of people using this medicine. and It's a very reliable psychedelic. Um, it's just we forgot how to use it. There was just a, it's, it's not as it's not that complicated, but it's more it's a little more complicated than just eating something and starting to trip, you know? Right. So the ceremony itself, I would say, you know, so the ceremony points to what we'd call set and setting. And, um, and so obvious major factors in the practice, but T, but pure, pure THC is uh, psychedelic, but it's also very anxiety provoking. So it's not like, um, it's not all about the THC. We, you know, when we add these different terpenes into it, uh, terpenes are like uh, the precursors to a different essential oils, right? It's what makes it smell different ways. Right. And so, so like, say a, a cannabis uh, flower that smells a lot like lavender, right, will have a terpene in it that relaxes the body, right? And and these, there are hundreds of terpenes in cannabis. And, and there's also other cannabinoids that are psychedelic, too. Um, and so I would suggest that it's as psychedelic as the other medicines. And um, but that sense of agency is still retained, which is pretty spectacular in a way. Mm. Um, so I've had I've personally had experiences that are indistinguishable from ayahuasca and DMT, LSD. I've had experiences like it's a shape shifting medicine. Mm. Uh, cannabis shape shifts into other medicines. Uh, sometimes it's like L- I've had LSD. I've had full blown LSD experiences on cannabis. Um, full blown psilocybin. Um, five meo DMT experiences on cannabis. So, um, so I'm a hundred percent behind that cannabis is psychedelic enough to uh, 
be a classic psychedelic. Um, I don't know enough about the soma and the effects of that, but I've heard it's similar to ayahuasca in the way they're describing it. Yeah, I was just curious totally possible. if you yeah. uh, looked at that when going into that, because there's a lot of stuff that is similar in terms of uh, the way you approach it and then the way the ancient people approached it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And obviously it's a lot more potent now, but I mean, you know, there's a whole... Well, that's the other factor, right? Maybe they were distilling it or something, making, you know, well, it's like that, the weed that we grew up on, we couldn't, yeah. know, it would just make us super anxious and stuff. And But now it's different. Like now these these plants, I mean, I've, they're evolving. Um, right. Through... Is there a particular strand that you would recommend? Sure. Uh, there's some really great stra- uh, strains here in Colorado. You know, they're, they constantly are changing and evolving. Um, it's more of the combination, though, right? This is that blend I was talking about. Yeah. Um, so TH, so there, there's even some uh, 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 products now in California that are like you smoke a couple of tokes and you're tripping hard. Um, but, they're, but they're mostly sativas, and so they amplify anxiety. Yeah, right. I don't like um, that. Yeah, sativa's yeah. like the uh, <laughs> uplifting, go out and do an activity in the sunlight right. kind of a, to me at least. You know. Yeah, sativa's like, think of like a mind amplifying, creativity amplifying, right, you know, right. like so, you, um, uh, you know, people write, do art, make music, they go out and exercise. Uh, so, you know, so it's energizing, right? And so excess energy would be anxiety provoking, right? Right. So, mm. so the super uplifting, elevating, you can feel really elevated and positive. Um, and then the opposite, right, is the indicas. Um, and uh, so what are some common things associated with indicas? Like um, sleep, you know, relaxation, like the stereotypical stoner who's couch lock and can't move. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like their whole body is just kind of a um, limp and um, like a puddle on the ground, right? So, when, but it's muscle relaxing. It's relaxing, and so this is where the trauma resolution takes place: is that the endocannabinoid system allows the muscles to relax enough for the trauma to release and discharge. So, what happens? If, so, you think about what happens if you combine a sativa, a really strong, like anxiety-provoking sativa, and a really deep um, body relaxing indica. Um, it's it's. Oddly, they don't cancel each other out. What happens is the positive traits amplify and the negative traits disappear. Um, if, if you, you know, like with the really good blend, you know, so, so you get all that creativity, that elevated energy, that mind expansing space of the sativa. Um, but then you get the deep muscle relaxation on the body awareness of the indica. And that cancels out the anxiety of the sativa and the elevation cancels out the dull, the dullness of the indica. Mm. Um, so you just have this deep body, deeply body relaxed space when you're, and it's psychedelic, like visually psychedelic, uh, mostly closed eyes visual, but I've, I've been in dark rooms where I've had open eye visuals with cannabis, yeah. um, mostly closed eye visuals, but people, it's either looks like a cartoon or they're, or um, like they're watching a cartoon play out, like a really bizarre cartoon. Um, so it kind of is like a paint-like quality to the visuals. But it, it can really go beyond that to like seeing lights and stuff, more like the, like the DMT level state um, where everything's made of light, you know, um, it's a little different. Yeah, the last or there, few, or... few years I've switched to uh, the carts because I think smoking for me, I don't know. It just gets my heart heart rate pumping a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's not that I won't do it occasionally, but I, that's even more psychedelic when, when when I do that. I feel like the cart, I can work with it more, uh, allows me to meditate and be a little bit more mm-hmm. calm and peaceful. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I know that there's not all the other extra cannabinoids in there either. So it's kind of like uh, if I want the full effect, I'll still smoke. But I love mm-hmm. what the carts do for me at this, this point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd, I just yeah. I, I gave up cannabis altogether because of my anxiety. Like I was mm-hmm. a, I used to love to puff on some uh, sativa, and then just because I'm a, I'm a video editor and stuff like that, so I'd mm-hmm. smoke and then I'd get into my editing. But then my anxiety just mm-hmm. it just got too intense. So that's why I was kind of asking you. I don't know if you have any mm-hmm. advice or uh, yeah. Yeah, I was just visiting my parents and their neighbor was asking this exact same question. You know, I really like smoking, but it's 
creating too much anxiety, you know. So really, like, you got to start thinking about different strains. You know, there might be strain-specific ones that you just like a lot more or drop it down to a hybrid, which are uh-huh. those um, strains that are blended, sativa, indicas. Or, you know, like, cannabis is just way stronger than it used to be. So Absolutely. Um, you just need to smoke, like, maybe smoke smaller puffs and, um, like, more more infrequent, like, during your your experience or switch to an indica you know that might you know like there there's so many variables and i promise there's one that would be perfect for you that's Mm. elevating and productivity enhancing and fun but you won't get that you know yeah i was thinking maybe to start vaping at a very low temperature and then kind of going more towards a lower thc and then i don't know i don't know what your what your opinion is on some of the more cbd based obviously those are lower thc yeah right there so cbd is great so i talk about this in my book it's like a natural antidote to thc so we actually so we have a nano encapsulated version of cbd that we use as a kind of an adjunct and antidote to like thc experiences so somebody's just uncomfortable in their bodies and overly anxious we can give them a couple of sprays of this under their tongue and within a few minutes all that anxiety drops out and they're able to stay in the trip so i can even send you some of this you know um um, oh, I give love it a try it. It's really great, and it it helps me to. I take it during, before speeches and presentations and classes and stuff, and it's it's a really good grounding medicine. Um, it's not psychoactive, um, so yeah, you can switch to something with some CBD in it, and that might be a big factor for you too. You know? Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I take a CBD pills every day, but mm-hmm. I think it's because it's so uh, light. I, I obviously I, I come from a background I smoked every day for 20 years and I'm looking for something I, it, it's so it's such a mm-hmm. subtle thing that I'm probably not even realizing that it's helping me to a degree so again I don't know I don't know if I'm looking for too much from that CBD or if it's CBD, just how much are you taking I think it's a 220 milligram capsules mm-hmm. okay yeah that's great that's a that's a good medium sized dose, not too much, but above average. It's good. It's really great medicine. I take it every day as well. I think anti inflammatory helps calm the nervous system down. It's uh-huh. good. It's just good neuroprotective medicine. It's used in treatment for dementia now and such in other countries. Um, so I would, I would highly recommend you keep taking it. Um, it's, yeah, and it would it's be not, subtle. It's not, it's not cheap, psychoactive. So. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it's if it's beneficial, I'll absolutely keep taking it. But like I said, I mean, this stuff isn't cheap. But again, I'm not I'm not putting yeah. a price on my mental health or anything, or or my health in mm-hmm. general. It's just, is it doing anything? I it's more of a, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You don't really see the effects, or maybe I have to take right. it for longer than a month or whatever. Yeah. Well, think it, if you were in pain, you'd probably feel it, you know, like feel some relief, you know, so it's usually helps with negative experiences. People who have inflammation in their body can feel, you know, feel it in their joints and stuff. But take it, keep taking it. It's a good um, preventative medicine. Um, I take it every day for sure. Beautiful. Mm. Yeah, it's good medicine. So the difference between the so the, the pills you have are probably oil-based pills, you know, just regular CBD. And, and so that goes through your liver and it takes a couple hours for it to kick in and such. Uh, we we help develop a nano encapsulated version, which is water soluble. And so that would be the one, you, you know, and you can get these online. You don't have to get them from us. Um, well, just nano encapsulated water soluble CBD sprayed mm-hmm. under your tongue and it's, and it'll drop your heart rate. It'll drop your anxiety down within a f- minute or two. It's, um, it's pretty fascinating and if and it's a good for those of you you know online and such who are listening who use other medicines it can help reduce anxiety if like you're having a bad mushroom trip too but you'd probably take like 10 times the amount of the spray you know like 50 milligrams or something as opposed to five and um and uh just because those medicines are so potent but it can it can really help is that why i don't know i've always gone to cannabis on the come down of psilocybin to help you know transition back into you know waking reality is that do you mm-hmm. think that 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 cbd hit from that is what's helping facilitate that obviously the thc might kick it back into gear a little bit too for yeah. me, but uh the cbd i feel like based on what you're saying might help ease that transition yeah no doubt yeah the only medicine i wouldn't recommend taking is THC after would be peyote there you know there's like this it's a common experience people who take 
um, like smoke a joint after peyote ceremony or something like that, um, they, they get really anxious and paranoid. And it's common enough to like say, you know, for me to share that with you guys. Sure. Um, you know, not, or any mescaline, I guess, you know, since peyote is not that common. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, it'll, you know, so if you take it at the peak or a little after the peak, it'll keep you in the psychedelic experience right a psilocybin or whatever and sometimes it'll be like a breakthrough experience people will right. really start tripping at that point but sure. on the end on the down leg it'll it'll slow the in, in like slow and smooth out the trajectory of the of the come down and make it a little softer for sure mm -hmm. um and is i'm that sure the case yeah, to be made? would be really helpful is that the case to be made too for you see these psilocybin trials and they're literally just giving people synthesized psilocin or psilocybin as opposed to the built-in technology of an actual mushroom where it has all those other right. components like baocysteine and I think there's one, I don't know what the type mm -hmm. of mushroom, there's a long word, a grucicillin or something like that. They found some compound that almost is like the CBD of psilocybin kind of. No kidding. No, yeah. I didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah. I'll so, have to check that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll try and I'll try and send you an email. I'll look at the, I, for, yeah. I always forget the name because it's like a long word, but. Yeah, um, that would be really cool to to learn more about that yeah you know the natural like we've we've worked with companies to develop vapes of the blend and all kinds of things and and uh the natural medicine i i, I haven't found a better uh option than just organic flour ground and put in a vaporizer it's super clean and you get everything you need out of that and mm. i so i think i think natural substances um that have different you know a, a wide array of different compounds and stuff i think they're i think they're better for us 100 percent. yeah um so in terms of your book um did you write it because you felt mm -hmm. like there's kind of like a, a like a, a void there because i don't really see too many books yeah about cannabis that talk about this aspect of it which is the psychedelic yeah. or psychoactive properties of it it's usually just something more straightforward or it's the history of it or it's this or it's mm -hmm. that but yeah i, I don't yeah. I, did you is, did you see that void or is this just something that you're just passionate about yeah well i didn't i didn't start this project thinking i was going to write a book it was more about writing about what i was discovering and rediscovering exploring you know it's like i don't think i made up like or invented cannabis as a psychedelic right like i i had trips like that and people um, speak to it, you know, I've had experiences with psychedelic or cannabis as a psychedelic, but I think, I guess I was the first to really put it in the container of psychedelic journey work, you know, practices, um, it, within like modern America and, um, uh, and, uh, and, and using it as a therapeutic tool. So I did some research as I was developing the book and there's no mention of, um, you know, like the main books, uh, Cannabis and Spirituality or the Big Pot book, the Big right. Pot book that's real commonly referred, you know, very few mentions of cannabis as a psychedelic, if if any, or cannabis assisted psychotherapy. Um, that's a new thing now since since my book came, you know, since I started my work. Um, and then we call our program Cannabis Assisted Psychedelic Therapy, just to clarify that we're, you know, we're really treating it as a psychedelic. Sure. Um, you know, I, I wrote my book. I I, I wrote my book. Um, one, I felt like I was talking to the void, right? There just wasn't a lot of contain, you know, like understanding at that time that cannabis was a psychedelic. And we still, it's our most common um, question in our program. Like, can cannabis really do this? Or, you know, I don't, I don't believe that's true. And so we talk about it, explain it. Um, but I wrote it because I wanted people to give people practices that they could use to help them heal themselves, mm. you know, from trauma, but also to wake up, you know, like we're in a crisis period uh, in the planet right now, you know, like in the United States and all over the world, climate change and social unrest. And I mean, this COVID thing, right. I didn't even, I didn't predict that you know as part of climate change i don't change, think anybody that's definitely did. Been, a, yeah. been a big factor right but i feel so, you on the vibe of the planet we need to you we know, need to turn this ship right we need to turn it and you know we, and and honestly i think humans need an intervention and psychedelics might provide that intervention you know it's like it goes deeper than psychotherapy it's more accessible in some ways for some people but there's not a lot of skill set um you know on our talk on how to actually use the medicines. And so I wanted to teach people how to do that working with a legal medicine, you know, like you don't have to 
break the law anymore to use these subs use to have in a psychedelic experience in, in most right. of the United States. And, and so it was the accessibility piece and the problem solving piece that I was really most interested in teaching people how to work with it for, you know, sure. um, I didn't, I didn't know what I was getting into, to be honest, like, like to me, this is just what I was doing. You know, I didn't realize, um, there was such an interest in it, you know, until, until I started really working with it. Yeah, I, I um I just really think that this is uh an important topic. Like I said, we don't we've talked a lot about all the other psychedelics and personal experiences and we've had all the psychedelic scientists on and uh mm-hmm. visionaries and people like that, but I just think that since Maurice and I have a long history with cannabis, I thought that you were the perfect guest to talk about this based on your Yeah, I appreciate and, that. Um yeah. And, uh, also, I mean, based on dosage, so like <laughs> we've done, it's called the secret episodes on our Patreon. We've done one of them so far and we were going to do more, but then obviously I, uh, we have a baby now and stuff like that. So I didn't have as much time to kind of go through with that. But the one episode we did do, I think I ate 200 milligrams. So I've, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I had worked my way up to like high I did that it, once. It, it doesn't really affect me as much as like other people say either for whatever reason. Like I don't like I've seen people eat like 10 and 20 milligrams and just get like, yeah, wasted. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's like I need to eat at least 50 to 100 to feel that yeah. effect. But I ate 200 in that episode that we did and I was still able to have a conversation. I mean, we still did an episode, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a little bit out there. But yeah, I mean, it was fun. Yeah. So. Yeah, I would say 50 to 100 probably be like a good edible dose for me to have a psychedelic experience. I did 200 once and um, it was pure oil from a friend of mine who owns a dispensary. And I tripped for about 12 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was having like yeah. ego dissolution experiences it, and, and, you know, a lot of anxiety, a lot of nausea. It's like not that, you know, not uncommon negative side effects. Yeah. Some of these, you know, some psychedelic or level cannabis um but yeah it's quite the experience i'm probably not going to do another 200 yeah no i mean it's it's not something i did regularly but yeah it's Uh just uh i remember one the one negative edible experience i had i my one buddy gave me a cinnamon roll and i didn't know how much was in it and obviously Uh there's a lot in it afterwards and i ate it and i'm telling you like 12 hours and i went to bed and then i was woke up and i was still like tripping and then i you know yeah. there's something rancid with the butter or something my stomach was all messed up you know yeah. so it was just yeah. an unpleasant experience but it was definitely super intense and it was probably right up there with some of the other psychedelic experiences that i've mm-hmm. had uh, in terms of yeah. intensity so yeah no doubt you know terrence mckenna once said something like um I'm going to paraphrase it, but something like it's really difficult to take too much cannabis, but it's a, it's worth striving for, you know, it's like really yeah. great. These heroic, you know, it's like heroic doses on cannabis. So it's sure. very similar to um, other medicines. What I would say though, is you can reduce the negative effects with the right mixture of terpenes and other cannabinoids that go with the THC. It's not all, it's not just about the THC. And so you, so you really can, like dial it in and, and and more so than what you're you know what we're all accustomed to with like the random edible or sure. you know you accidentally take too much absolutely i uh yeah i don't know i've taken a break from the edibles for a while and i'll occasionally hit the pen but i'm not mm-hmm. really partaking that much these days i just got too much stuff going on but uh yeah i mean mm-hmm. it's just it's one of those things where like you said, I, most people think like, oh, what, weed or cannabis? Mm-hmm. And that's You're having psychedelic yeah. What are you talking about, you know? Yeah. And I think it's, I could see that mindset a long time ago when I was younger, but now it's like, I just have a reverence for anything psychoactive. Now, even when I have a lot of caffeine, I treat that like, oh, yeah, I'm going to sure. have a, a lot of caffeine. This is going to jack my anxiety way up, you know? Mm-hmm. So I got to be prepared for that if I do this, you know? So anything mind altering mm-hmm. at this point, you know, you don't even think about things like that, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's the mindfulness of it. I think that's what I really responded to in your book. And yeah, I appreciate that. You put a lot of thought and obviously into it. And obviously you can tell you're very experienced in your practices and the center that you guys run and everything like that. So appreciate that yeah. as well. And yeah. even you talk about like the laws and legality and all that stuff in there as well. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Well, come to Boulder. Come check it out. I'll um, I'll I'd love to work with you both and, and do a journey together. And you get to see for yourself, even if you're a regular smoker, it still works. We just give you a little more. Um, and it, you know, like it again, it's super, it's so reliable. I've been able to develop a center a clinic and a training program around it. Like I don't like I don't think I'd be able to do that if I were blowing smoke. You know, um, or, or just like <laughs> yeah, right, uh, or just. Uh, you know, sort of psychedelic, you know, it's really inspiring. It's the most inspiring job I've ever had for sure. So it's love to see you in Boulder. And <laughs> I love Boulder, man. I've been backpacking yeah. there the last two years, I think. Yeah. I didn't go this year, but uh, yeah, yeah, man, I love that. I love Colorado. I almost moved there a couple of times, but that's, that's mm -hmm. the place to be, I think. Yeah, we love it here. It was mm -hmm. one of the few places I felt safe doing this work at, you know, like 10 years ago. So sure. things have definitely changed since then, but yeah. really grateful for what I was Yeah, able like to I said, it's amazing here. that cannabis is legal for people of age where I live, where Maurice lives, and where you live. It's, we live in, I mean, we live in three different states. Mm -hmm. That's an, it's where it's yeah. amazing times we're living in here. I think we're around 70% of the U.S. population lives in a, a legal state at least medically legal you know so that's that's yeah, really they're still they're still fighting tooth and nail to keep this thing illegal but <laughs> boy they are yeah unbelievable man it's like just give it up but again i think it's the older people in the office and as they yeah move away then you know it's just like it's it's so silly although for me and michael and probably for you we've grown up in this mindset that this this stuff is so illegal and bad that it's like it's still mm -hmm. bad to me last time i was in colorado so i yeah. saw some guy smoking a joint out on the, on the in the street and i was like you can't do that <laughs> and I, then i realized oh wait a minute you can yeah you can yeah right yeah. well that's the you know that's the war on <laughs> drugs man it, it really got embedded into a certain age group you know us and uh just say no campaign and all of that this that's a big part of what we talk about in our training program is how to like work and heal that belief system because it took me about four or five years working with this professionally until i was finally really able to let it go it's it goes pretty deep you know? yeah yeah i mean people that like people like us that are advocates for it it's still it penetrated mm -hmm. our subconscious and mm -hmm. I want to wow. ask you about that, though, too. Before we get out of here, we are going to do a Patreon segment with you recorded after we get out of here live. Yeah. But uh, before we get out of here, I want to ask you about that, though, because growing up, it was illegal. There was even though it was illegal, there was like a certain it added to the the mystery and the mysticism. Of sure. It. Like, do you yeah. think that that's why people don't think about it the same way because and i'm not saying it just because of the laws mm -hmm. but just like almost like when you were doing it you had to be like set and setting you had to know where you were know your surroundings mm -hmm. kind of a thing and now it's kind of like like you said people freely out there doing it and they're not really thinking twice about it do you think that there's something to that not that we should go back to that but maybe there's a way to preserve that mm -hmm. mystery and that mysticism aspect of it mm -hmm. Yeah, let's amplify it, you know, bring it into real intentional ceremonial containers and show what the true potential of it is. Like, again, I've I've done this for 10 years now full time and um, I'm still learning the potential of this medicine. And, um, and I'm regularly surprised by what happens and the intensity of it. So, um, you know, people do talk about that, like there's something like something kind of attractive to the you know, like the bad um, uh, uh, outlaw kind of vibe of it and such. But I would say that caused more damage than any benefit whatsoever, you know, sure. like, um, not to mention, you know, all the people have gone to jail and stuff uh, and, you know, ruin, lives ruined because of um, the prohibition. But, uh, you know, that the, the prohibition mindset, the what is it like reefer madness? And yeah. It's just miss, you know, like think of the miss. Um, information that's causing damage to the planet now right like that was part of it and think right. of the loss of potential that could have come you know from people just smoking it casually i think i think there's therapeutic benefits of just smoking it casually and so i think it could have helped a lot more people than it did you know? yeah i guess what you were saying though like maybe it's just we just need to kind of going back to like the mystery traditions or the, the Eleusinian mysteries or soma mm -hmm. rituals or just i think that's the aspect of it that i'm talking about it just so happens that the secrecy or the esoteric notions of it kind of were coupled with the with legality of it because yeah. of the situation yeah we get some you know negative feedback from two 
primary places. One would be the just say no folks, you know, and the culture, you know, that, that particular culture, sure. you know, and all of that, right, which is totally expected. But we also get it from plant medicine practitioners where they say cannabis is just a recreational drug. You have to take really? class from it before. Yeah, some I You would think that they would know better. I don't know. Mm-hmm. No, that's that belief system that's been ingrained. They don't, you know, it's like that, like, again, you don't even know it's in there. You don't even know it's filtering or like uh, uh, muddling up your, ex, you know, your projection. Do you think it's because they hold their their compound to a higher regard? Like it's almost like more religious to them that they look down yeah, upon sure. something that's not mm-hmm. as potent? Well, I think in any religious tradition, you have dogma and, you know, the psychedelic religious traditions are... Um, no different than that you know um but so everybody it's okay to have a preference you know if you have if your favorite medicine that you use and some medicines don't fit well for others but i think people um are starting to be more and more open to cannabis and giving it a try as a psychedelic but you know it's like, like as a as a branding thing it's probably the biggest question you know we have as a organization is how this how do we rebrand cannabis to be more to its truth you know and its potential as opposed to and we got to fight it's not a neutral space you got to fight against another brand which is the crack an egg and fry a skillet you know like, right. you know what i mean like yeah. you know like those, this, those is, your are, you know, this is your brain on drugs saturday morning <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, yeah. You know, so like, many myths in high school we heard <laughs> so many myths about the gateway uh, drug yeah or the, even other things like mdma puts holes in your brain and LSD. Sure. Uh, you crack mm-hmm. your back and you have flashbacks. You're going to go also... crazy. Yeah, oh, yeah there's I remember all... that one. I forgot about the back crack. Yeah. One. <laughs> I think even one of our teachers told some story of some guy that put a sheet in his sock and he sweated yeah. through and he died. Like this, this stuff's just propaganda. That's just crazy uh, nonsense. And none of them actually were true, but that just shows you how yeah. the game telephone works. But um, yeah, yeah. Exactly uh, right. so, I do want to wrap it up here. We are going to do a Patreon segment with you. Everybody should definitely go check out Daniel's book, uh, Psychedelic Cannabis. I have the link down below. Again, shout out to Inner Traditions. And, uh, yeah, check out uh, 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 Mindful Medicinals. I'll put the link in there as well. Um, And, yeah, is there anything else you want to plug before we get out of here? Well, you know, just, you know, we have a center here. So if, you know, it's too much to try it on your own following the book, you know, come visit us. We also do online cannabis sessions now, super safe and effective. Uh, We work with ketamine too in the clinic. And then uh, if you're interested in learning how to be a sitter or you want to go through a really intensive process, like psychedelicsitterschool.org is where you can learn more about our training program. And so we teach a lot of people, uh, both what we call like community guides who are working with friends and family. And then, but we also work with a lot of professionals who want to do this for a living. And that's kind of my job is helping people transition into those professions. So I would love to work with anybody. And uh, he's also on Twitter. Follow him on Twitter. I tagged him when I posted today. So if you follow us on Twitter, go follow Mm -hmm. Daniel, please. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate the time. And uh, before we get on out of here, every, well, Number one, I added some new merch to our merch store. So if you're interested, I added a cool new Anubis shirt. Uh, there's the Portara shirt. We've got all sorts of awesome designs in there that I created. So go check out our merch store. Also, head on over to Patreon at patreon.com slash podcast For just $2 a month, you'll get exclusive guest episodes and segments. We're about to do one with Daniel right now. We're probably going to talk about DMTX. Uh, so check that out. It'll be uploaded later. But we have tons of content on there. Uh, again, if you listen to our show for just $2 a month, you get exclusive uh, access to pretty much you know a whole other podcast. So check that out. Uh, and if you are interested, also head on over to indrasweb.org. This is the social media platform we create, created to connect open minds. So if you want to hypothesize, theorize, speculate, whatever your thing is, head on over there. Uh, we're trying to raise everybody's consciousness, so head on over there. And one more time, if you're interested, we are going to give away this Mind Escape t-shirt. We only have two sizes available left, so large and medium. But if you're interested, you can enter to win. All you have to do is go to Apple Podcast, leave us a five-star review, take a screenshot of it, and send it to mindescapepodcast at gmail.com, and uh, you will be entered to win. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much, Daniel. And uh, we'll definitely have you back on again in the future. This was yeah, awesome. Was awesome. So many more other yeah, things we could it. talk about, too. Yeah. So. Uh, thanks so much, Mike and Maurice. Really appreciate being here. It's been great. Appreciate you. Absolutely. And uh, we love everybody. Stay safe out there, and we'll catch you next time.
Peace. Peace.